Hello fellow lovers of liberty, my name is Matthew Dalton. And I'm Robert Wiseman and welcome back to the Journalistic Revolution. Today we're going to be talking about several subjects. Um, we're going to go into Obama and compared to Bush and Romney, which should really get some attention. Uh, we're also going to talk about alternative money systems, nullification, Linux phones. Linux. Linux phones, like we brought up last week with the, uh, the Apple patent, so we're going to relate that to that show. Occupy Wall Street. Good news coming out of there. Uh, yeah. out of that area. Some pretty good news. And Gary Johnson. We're going to be biased today. Oh, biased. <laughs> All right. In this uh, segment of the show, what we're going to be discussing is uh, Obama and how his policies relate towards uh, Romney and Bush's policies. Because um, a lot of people have been trying to call out the fact that Obama is not exactly the same as Romney. And I'm going to admit to you guys now, you're right. He's not exactly the same. <laughs> but every cookie out of the same cookie cutter isn't exactly the same either. And we're especially going to relate him to Bush because we know how much Obama people, fans of Obama love Bush. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I, and, and I, and I want to show that I am not biased because these are the same dang reasons I disliked Bush and I protested against him. And now Obama is doing them. My values have not changed. What my question is, is a lot of people on the left have your values changed because these were your main complaints about Bush as well. Mm -hmm. um, Obama versus Bush. All right. Patriot Act. We all know the history of um, Bush and the Patriot Act and how nobody read it. They pushed it through in a 24-hour vote. Um, and, and, and how detrimental it was to... Uh, our civil liberties. Um, it allowed uh, wiretapping. Uh, it uh, started the rendition programs. Um, it did a lot of things that um, were not good for freedom as a whole. Yeah. Um, so, and that's Bush. And we place the Patriot Act squarely on his shoulders as far as blame goes. But one of the reasons I was rooting for Obama during the 2008 elections was because one of the things he was talking about was repealing the Patriot Act and saying that it uh, it didn't follow constitutional law. Um, and him being a constitutional lawyer, I thought he knew what he was talking about. Um, and so he said he was going to get rid of it um, or at least um, strengthen it. But on May 27, 2011, uh, Obama renews it, including the roving wiring taps, uh, the wire taps, uh, uh, obtaining your business records or records from businesses without a warrant, um, and uh, the lone wolf provision, actually expanding that section, which is uh, monitoring uh, terrorists who have no connection to Al Qaeda whatsoever. And if if you don't mind, I'm going to kind of expand this beyond Obama. This is where the Tea Party lost a lot of credibility mm -hmm. because a large portion of the people that were voted into office because of the Tea Party voted for the Patriot Act. Yeah, they voted for the renewal. Yeah. So um, I, I am not attacking just Obama. Like, this is Obama's fault. That thing wouldn't have even been in front of him. If Tea Party conservatives actually had followed and stuck to their rhetoric, yeah. it would have never been in front of Obama in the first place. Um, but Obama did say that he didn't like it. He wanted to get rid of it when he was running for president. But when there was a renewal in front of him, he didn't use his veto power. And he had the perfect opportunity to do so. And I'd be voting for him today just based on that fact alone. Wiretaps. That was another big one, man. I remember headlines um, all in 2006 to 2008 um, about the wiretaps, the roving wiretaps, um, how uh, how pissed off everybody was about it. Keith Oberman did show after show on it. Um, and, and Obama, again, said not without a warrant uh, during his 2008 campaign. Uh, and then in June of 2010, it was confirmed by Washington Post that under the Obama administration, wiretapping had raised to 1.7 billion calls, emails, and other forms of communication daily. That's daily. 1.7 billion forms of communication daily. And... This is just conversations. This video is most likely going to be in that statistic in here in a couple of days. <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm going to kind of cover the whole aspect of this. A lot of people, and I was one of those people who goes, well, if you got nothing to hide, you know. <laughs> yeah, and, love and, that excuse. And, and the reality is, is it shouldn't matter if you have something to hide. The Founding Fathers did not create our Constitution because they had something to hide. I, I can't remember who said this exactly, but I'm kind of paraphrasing what they said. Um the the constitution was created to protect all citizens from this kind of tyranny mm -hmm. it wasn't it wasn't created to protect the people writing it so 
when when people use that terminology, well, you know, if you got nothing to hide, well, there's a problem because going back to what we talked about last week in the slippery slope, mm -hmm. Gitmo, all right, or for the non you know lingo hip people, that's Guantanamo Bay, mm -hmm. all right. Now it, Obama famously uh, was against it, and uh, even looked like he was going to do it um, as he said that he would close Guantanamo Bay. It would be one of his first acts in office mm -hmm. if he was to be elected. And it was. January 21st, uh, 2009, uh, Obama orders Guant Guantanamo Bay closed. And uh, I, I, was, I was happy. Um, you know, he was looking like he might have some qualities for re-election. Uh, March 7th, uh, 2011, he signs an order, uh, an executive order, which, you know, I am very against all executive orders, an executive order creating a system of indefinite detention based out of Gitmo. So how's it going to get closed if we're, <laughs> if we're going to be sending everybody the NDAA is arresting to Guantanamo Bay? Yeah, it, it, just, it just doesn't go well. I, I'm trying to think of a really good analogy where I can kind of, it's like saying that you're going to close the grocery store but still keep all the doors open and keep stocking your shelves. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, a good, that's a good one. Um, drone strikes. Okay, now the, the uh, drone strikes is... Ah, this is touching. This is touching. Um, <laughs> we're, I'm just going to blow through this and we're going to do another segment on it more in deep. Um, it's, uh, in its first year in Obama in office, and you got to remember he didn't... He was talking about not expanding the wars, which he expanded the wars to several different countries. But... Uh, his first year, he bombed fifty Un unconstitutionally expanded the war. Yes, yes, because he didn't. He had, he had ninety days to do whatever he wanted, and he continued to go past the ninety days. But um, fi uh, first year, fifty three drone strikes. Uh, two thousand ten, that was two thousand nine. Two thousand ten, one hundred and seventeen drone strikes. Um, and then in, in two thousand twelve, you know, we haven't really got there yet. Um, but April twenty sixth, twenty twelve. Uh, he gave CIA a, a, an expansion order for the authority of drone strikes, giving them basically uh, a wider field from which they can do this legally. <laughs> um, April 30th, 2012, John Brennan acknowledges drones publicly for the first time. Now, that wasn't that long ago. Uh, the Obama administration, and people asked about it to the Obama administration often, and... Uh, uh, they they often denied it, said it wasn't happening, or it was top secret matters, and they couldn't comment it on the time. May 29th, 2012, the Obama administration reports, all military-age males are enemy combatants, <laughs> talking about the drone strikes, yeah. unless they are proven innocent after the fact. And you got to remember, these are in third world countries where kids as young as eight years old are carrying around AK-47s. Mm-hmm. So what's the legal age of a military, uh, uh, an aged military in a third world country? I, I don't know, but it's, it's <laughs> ridiculous. I mean, are they using our standards, 17 to 18? You have to have parents' permission at the age of 17? Or we'll, we'll get deeper into that in the next segment. Um, but um, military commissions, the, the tribunals um, for terrorists that we arrest, um, that was another thing Obama was against that I supported his rhetoric in. Um, he wanted to get rid of those, and he said we should try them in federal court. Um, on January 9th, or on January in 2009, he temporarily halts the commissions. Um, but then in May 2011, the Obama administration drops the plans to try Khalid Salik Mohammed and four others in federal court going back to the, the military commissions, which he actually uh, started back up in, um, the, in towards the end of uh, 2009. And then as of 2011, there's been over 300 convictions in the federal court system for terrorists. Convictions, all right? But as of February in 2012, uh, there's been seven convictions by military commissions. It sounds like the doing it the old-fashioned way is working just fine. <laughs> Why are we trying to reinvent it? And he promised to get rid of them, but he's still doing them. It... it it's annoying. And those are the similarities between <clears throat> the almighty hated Bush, yeah. which I hate right along with you, <laughs> right? And uh, the, the, and the Messiah Obama. And this, and this speaks to it because if you looked at uh, 2002 to 2007, there were people protesting like crazy. Yeah. Nonstop. 
I was one protesting of Bush, protesting Bush, in the streets, protesting Bush. That's why the Republicans came out with this whole stupid yellow ribbon thing, because people were saying, oh, we're against the wars, and they were like, oh, yeah, we'll support your troops. <laughs> Which we're not suggesting that you don't support the troops. Um, yeah, support the troops, bring them home. Yeah, support the troops, bring them home. But where are all those protesters now? And that's what's upsetting me about the left is I feel like you guys have a double standard. Mm -hmm. um, you're willing to make uh, allowances to your leaders, your team, uh, when they do something wrong that if the other team did, you would be up in arms about. And I'm not saying that you're any less wrong about your accusations towards the other team. I'm saying you're not as right as you think you are about your team. Because I'm not on a team. And your all's team suck. <clears throat> so that's Obama and Bush. Um, now to Obama and Romney. Now again, um, they're different. You know, uh, Romney's against gay rights. Obama's for them before he was against them, mm -hmm. and, or against them before he was for them. And um, and their their foreign policies actually aren't the same. Never mind. <laughs> Those are exactly the same. Uh, <laughs> and. Um, Anyway, let's just get into it. All right, so Obama versus Romney here. Foreign policy. When asked about U.S. intervention overseas, Romney answered, only in a direct, direct threat to national security. Uh, when Obama was asked, he said, only when it's national security, human rights violations, or asked by the international communities. Um, ending the war in Afghanistan, when they asked about that, um, they both said, no. I mean, granted, they gave different answers, but I mean, it both equated to no. Now that's all that matters in the end. Uh, support uh, for Israel monetarily and, and with um, troops. Both of them answered yes. Yes. When asked about Iran and what we should do about Iran, they both answered isolate through trade embargoes. <laughs> that's both of them. That's yeah. It. And I, I have to interject. I saw a, uh, an interview on CNN where they basically cut Ahmadinejad's speech off at the UN. And the, and the one lady was complaining that uh, Ahmadinejad was was blaming it on everybody else again. How dare he blame it? He's going to have his own problems in his own country because their economy is in shambles. Why is his economy in shambles? Could it be because of trade, trade embargoes? embargoes and the fact that we've cut off all their routes and made it impossible for their economy to thrive? And isn't that technically an act of war? Mm -hmm. So, Which brings us back, uh, this actually brings us full circle to maintaining a presence in the UN. <laughs> the king of trade embargoes. Yes. Um, uh, and their answer when asked if we should maintain a presence in the UN, both of them effectively answered yes. yes. Now the economy. All right. Now this is where they do differ somewhat, and you know, and I. Oh, depending on which Romney you're talking about. Well, <laughs> yes. Um, economy. Right. Um, should we still subsidize farms here in America? Uh, both answered yes. Um, should we raise the minimum wage? This is for all you left wingers. Right? Uh, um, should we raise the minimum wage? They both answered no. No. Domestic policy. Uh, should we keep the Patriot Act? Both answered, and you guessed it, yes. Um, when they were asked if we should de decriminalize marijuana, they both answered no. no. Uh, if we should keep corporate and unit funded super PACs. Now, I know. A lot of people on the right are against this, okay? And I know a crap load of people on the left are against this, and both your leaders answered yes. yes. Um, uh, death penalty, drilling, Obamacare, illegal immigration, health care, they all answered together yes. yes. Now, I know you're thinking, what, what do you mean, Obamacare? What do you, what do you mean? <laughs> he, said, he said he's going to repeal, but he also yes, said a, replace. replace. And what he wants to replace it with is basically Obamacare without an individual mandate. And here's a picture of his repeal and replace. Whoosh. Check us out um, in the next segment.